What are fossil fuels? Fossil fuels are fuels formed by anaerobic decomposition of buried dead organisms. Anaerobic means the absence of oxygen and decomposition means the process of rotting. Why are fossil fuels bad for the environment? Fossil fuels are the largest emitters of greenhouse gases which pollute the air we breathe and the water we drink. Why do we use fossil fuels? We use fossil fuels because it is a form of energy that we can use for many causes. For example, we use fossil fuels for transportation, hot water, and electricity. Can the world explode if we overuse fossil fuels? Running out of fossil fuels is a very big issue the world has to consider since fossil fuel makes up 80% of the world's global energy according to WWF and is not renewable, which means we have to wait millions of years for it to form again. Fossil fuels are very useful when we burn them. Burning fossil fuels produces carbon dioxide which is a greenhouse gas. Greenhouse gases are gases that heat the average surface temperature of the earth. This is known as global warming. When the temperature rises, the snow and ice in the North and South Pole and all the snowy places will melt and become water which will go into the ocean and rise the level of water which will cause flooding. Flooding and pollution yes, but earthquakes, tornadoes, tsunamis, hurricanes and cyclones? Where did Blobertson get his information from? He linked the overuse of fossil fuels to the natural disasters that have happened in the Pacific Rim. There were many natural disasters that occurred in the Pacific Rim. On the 26th of December, 2004, just past midnight, a catastrophic earthquake of magnitude 9.1 struck just off the west coast of North Sumatra of Indonesia, which kept shaking for nine minutes. It triggered a series of devastating sun armies of which claimed the lives of over 230,000 people in 14 countries. Scientists started investigating the cause of this disaster. The cause goes back to the geology of the Earth. Earth has four layers. Look at the demonstration below. Earth's outer layer or crust is broken into pieces called tectonic plates, which are constantly moving towards away from or past each other. The tectonic plates comprise the bottom of the crust and the top of the Earth's mantle. The mantle underneath the tectonic plates is constantly recirculating, causing the plates to float around slowly in a process called tectonic drift. Tectonic plates are famously known for being the source of earthquakes. Because continents are part of these plates, they also move. An earthquake occurs when the rocks break and move as a result of stress is caused by plate movements. Many earthquakes in recent years occurred in the Pacific Rim, such as the 2010 Chile earthquake, the 2011 Christchurch earthquake, the 2011 Great East Japan earthquake. These were the major earthquakes that happened. Most earthquakes occur on the edge of plates, especially where one plate is forced under another such as happens off Sumatra or past another as occurs in California. Some regions have more earthquakes than others with 80% of all recorded earthquakes taking place around the edge of the Pacific Plate <coughs> in New Zealand, Papua New Guinea, Japan, Canada, USA and South America. In relation to the earthquakes, scientists know why tsunamis happen. First of all, what is a tsunami? A tsunami is a series of very long ocean waves created when a large body of water is displaced. It is very destructive and can sweep all the objects it reaches. The largest ever tsunami reached a height of 518 meters with speed, up to 720 kilometers per hour. Scientists also know how volcanoes form and why they erupt. Volcanoes form due to the movement of tectonic plates. When a tectonic plate sinks, it sinks down into the mantle and becomes very hot, so hot in fact, that the rock melts. This molten rock will gradually make its way up to the surface of the earth through a series of cracks. When it reaches the surface of the earth, we refer to it as lava. As layer upon layer of lava builds up, a volcano is formed. Now we know how the earthquakes in the Pacific Rim were caused, and know that it is not related to the overuse of fossil fuels. But humans still have a problem to solve. 
if fossil fuels take up almost 80% of our global energy and is not renewable, then when it finishes we have to have a different source of energy to replace it. Solar power is one source. The sun's light, and all light, contains energy. Usually, when light hits an object the energy turns into heat, like the warmth you feel while sitting in the sun. There are some objects when hit by the sun, the sun turns them into an electrical current instead, which we can then harness for power. Scientists have created solar panels which are made of solar cells. What is a solar cell? A solar cell is a device people can make that takes the energy of sunlight and converts it into electricity. How does a solar cell turn sunlight into electricity? In a crystal, the bonds between silicon atoms are made of electrons that are shared between all of the atoms of the crystal. The light gets absorbed, and one of the electrons that's in one of the bonds gets excited up to a higher energy level and can move around more freely than when it was bound. That electron can then move around the crystal freely, and we can get a current. This process is similar to the photosynthesis process in plants. Solar panels can be stuck to the roof of your house to heat the water you use and give you enough electrical supply. Another source of energy is using hydrogen fuel cells. These cells take the energy from bonding hydrogen and oxygen. The only thing that is emitted in this process is water. This fuel source could be used to power everything that currently runs on fossil fuels.